read the passage, it's pretty clear what he's doing. And so, oh, and by the way, um, in, verse four, in verses 13 and 14, if you look at that, he repeats verse 12. Okay, so he says it in verse 12, he repeats in verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not count myself as ha uh, to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead, I press on. There's the same word again he used in verse 12. Same word. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus. So in verses 12 to 14, he's saying the same thing twice. I haven't attained, and so I press on. I haven't gotten there, I press on. Okay, that's kind of the structure of those three verses there. So the first question, and, and I'm, I'm wanting to use this verse to, in order, as we start this new year, because like I said this morning, it's a good time to just kind of refocus and remember our salvation and, and to redirect our attention. So the first question, or the first thing I want to put before us is, what should I press on toward? What should I pursue? That's the first question. So, I mean, we, we all have choices that are going to be coming before us day in and day out, starting right now, right? So this coming year, this coming new year, we want to recommit our life to Christ, if that's our desire. Then we're going to have to choose what we're going to head towards. What decisions are we going to make? Where are we going to go with our lives this coming year? So we're going to press on towards something. And the question is, what should we press on to? And we want to use Paul as our example. So what is he pressing on? I, I think directly, first of all, we go back to verse 12. He says, I haven't attained it yet. I haven't been perfected, but I keep on going. Uh, you can kind of, um, what's the word? Put it in those terms. But I keep on going. And so he keeps on going in order to attain, in order to be perfected. But if we go back a little bit, then we can begin, I think, it's pretty clear if we read the context here in which this verse occurs, it, what he has in mind. So just look at it, beginning in verse 7. He says, The things that I gain, that were gained to me, I have counted these as loss for, for Christ. Verse 8. I count all things lost for knowing Christ. Yeah, the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Christ. Verse 9. And be, and be found in him. So he puts it aside to be found in him. Verse 9. Not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God, so by faith. So, in order to obtain righteousness, not my own righteousness from the law, but my righteousness that comes to me by faith in God. Hmm. Verse 10, that I may, what, what's it say? That I may know him. know him, that I may know, what's next? The power of the, the, power of the resurrection, that I may know, next, Suffering. The fellowship of his suffering. That's a tough one, but there it is. It's there. Being conformed to his death. Let me just say something really quick about that. Um, if you're going to be in Christ, you should be willing to enjoy everything that being with him entails. The good and the hard, time, uh, hard thing. So anyway, just to throw that out there. Verse 11. If by any means I may attain. Now, now, now here... The language is getting, in verse 12 he says, I haven't already attained. But here he says, the purpose is that I may attain to what? Resurrection. The resurrection from the dead. So this is eschatological, which means, I think he's even looking forward to, to the end of following Christ. The <laughs> resurrection from the dead. So then we come to verse 12. And he says, I haven't attained it, I'm not perfect, but I press on. So what should we press on? How would you summarize those verses 7 through um, 11. And then we could, of course, go down to verse 14. He says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, so again, we're talking about Christ and uh, heading towards him and all that. So what kind of words might we use? What should be our pursuit given what we read in verses 7 through 11? How would you summarize that? 
look to make my life more Christ-centered. All right, Christ, Christ-centered, making my life, pursuing Christ. To know Christ. Yeah, to know Christ. The, everything in those verses really revolves around Christ. I, I think we can say, that, I mean, he's counting the loss of all things that he may gain Christ. So he has in front of him Christ. And so what ought, if we're going to follow Paul's example in our lives, what ought we put before us and head towards? Christ. Hmm. And all things that re, relate to Christ. Jesus should be in front of us. So now, you know, if we were to get even more practical than that, I mean, what does it mean to pursue Christ? Well, you know, all of the things, we, we have to count Jesus more valuable than the worldly things. Um, Here's, here's something that I constantly remind myself about, is that everything in this world should be take it or leave it in light of Christ. I mean, it's nice to have this and it's nice to have that and I wish I didn't have to have that and all that, but in the end, it's all secondary to being in Christ. Christ is the most valuable thing in life. So, you know, while we're... Uh, it's nice that the lights are on and the air conditioner works, or the heater. The heating works. It's nice that the heating works. Uh, Frank had some trouble with air conditioner, right? Just before the... <coughs> and that's unpleasant when that happens. We had some trouble. Was it air conditioner? Was it your... Oh, no, the, the pump. Yeah. yeah, the sewer pump. No, yeah. the water. The water pump. Yeah, no, All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that the water pump works, but we could always go down to the creek and... <laughs> 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 no, but really, it's nice that the water pump works, and it's nice, I had trouble with my air conditioner, it's nice that the air conditioner works, and it's nice that the lights work, and it's nice that the car works, and all of these things, it's nice that my chair works. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what are all of these things? You know, they, they add to our comfort, and they are conveniences for us, but what matters is our relationship to Christ, that matters more than anything. So the, the pursuit of my heart and the pursuit of my life should be directed towards Jesus. And so we can think about, what, is, what does it mean to follow Jesus? And, and here I want you guys to tell me, what does it mean? What does it look like to follow Christ? What does that mean for our lives as a, individuals and as a church? What does that mean? What kind of things? Think before you do. What? Think before you do. Okay. All right. You have to be Christ-centered instead of self-centered. Yeah. That's what you are when you want all the other well, That's right. We don't want to think about ourselves. I mean, we know what people are like when they're thinking about themselves, and we rarely like it when we see it in somebody else. We, want to see, we don't want to be like that. So we don't want to be self-centered. We want to be Christ-centered. We don't want to think. Um, we don't want to just do things you know, that are meaningless. We want to make sure that we're doing something intentional that's worthwhile. So what else? What does serving Christ mean? What does that look like? Okay, do his will. Rather than mine. Yeah, serving others, that's a huge one. That, that's following Christ, it's about serving others. What else? Yeah, we, you know, that's, a, that's a big one too. You know, we, we hold on to our bitternesses and resentments and our anger and hatred and we want to see them like he sees them. And hopefully all that stuff would melt away from our hearts. Living in Christ, yeah. Yeah. living, living in light of, I mean, it's right in there with Christ centered, but in the act of the gospel, what what he's accomplished in the gospel, I think that that just bleeds out into everything else in life. Then, if yeah, we're it bleeds down that, to everything. So that, that's so, where I'm trying to draw it out. What are these everything that Christ is yeah. impact? I'm going to live in in a state of of joy in general as, as yeah, a whole. Joy, that's a good one right joy there. If we're going to pursue Christ, there ought to be a measure of joy in our hearts yeah. because we see. We see what he has done that is so great and supersedes everything else. We have to be obedient, too. Yeah, that's right. Being obedient to the things of the Word of God, uh, getting into the Word of God. I mean, one of them is the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. Hmm. There's an excellence in the knowledge of Christ, having a knowledge of Christ. That's excellent. Hmm. Stephen, did you have something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Worship God. Yes, yeah, so we want to worship Him. That's an important part of seeking Christ. We worship Him. Hmm. So, uh, 
So these are ought to be the objects. I mean, we're, we're, we're keeping our eyes on Jesus, as it says in Hebrews. We keep our eyes on Jesus. And keeping our eyes on Jesus means we are going to do the things that are, that are uh, Christ-honoring, that, that Christ you know, views as worthwhile. So that ought to be our pursuit. And so I want to challenge us as we begin a new year to put the Christ things in front of us. Put Christ in front of us and all that that means. Put that in front of you. Make that the object of your pursuit. All right? So that's the first question. Pursue what? Pursue Christ and all that that means. The second question is pursue how? How should we pursue? Well, uh, this is actually the, the meaning of the word here. You know, what does this word mean? He says, but I press on. What does that word mean, press on? That he uses in verse 12 and it, that he uses in verse 14. I press on. So what does that mean, to press on? What does that word mean? How should I pursue? So let me give you four definitions for this word. These are all synonyms. These are all meanings that are kind of related to one another. But uh, in order to get an idea of what he is saying here, he says, I'm heading towards the goal of Christ. I'm pursuing him. So how is he pursuing him? What does this mean, I pursue? So here are the four definitions. All right, first, to move rapidly and decisively toward an object. Hasten, run, pray, press on. So it's like the football player. I was watching some football this afternoon. So it's like the football player, he gets the, he gets the ball, and he's not just going to kind of, you know, hold on guys, and you know, just kind of <laughs> take it easy and stroll casually to, to the end zone, right? He's going to move rapidly and decisively toward an object. He's running with that ball to the goal, av <laughs> avoiding every single obstacle. To hasten, to run, to press on. That's the first meaning. The second meaning, th this is a common word, that's why there are these different definitions. The second meaning, to harass someone, especially because of beliefs, to persecute. So sometimes this word, to press on, is translated in other verses, to persecute. Now we'll come back to, how in the world do you get going rapidly and decisively towards something with persecuting something? Well, if you think about it, it's kind of the same. If, if there's some, something out there that I want to get and throw down and stomp, and that this is really important to me, then how am I going to go after it? I'm going to go. So, I don't have the ball. The other team has the ball. <laughs> They're running towards the goal line. And what am I going to do? I'm going to run as hard as I can to grab that guy and throw him down to the ground so he doesn't make it. It's the same thing. His object is to make the goal. My object is to get him. <laughs> All right? But we could use the Greek. We use the same word in both cases. Okay? So to persecute, to harass. The third one, and this is kind of just repeating, to cause, to run, or set in motion, drive away, drive out. Now this is where I make somebody else go. It's like the coach on the sideline, run, <laughs> run! Or on the other sideline, get him, get him! So this is where I'm causing that action of, of moving rapidly. And then the, fa the final definition is to follow in haste in order to find something, to run after, pursue. So it's just kind of the same thing. So this is the idea of the word. So our pursuit, what are we to pursue? Christ. How are we to pursue him? Like we've got the ball, we've got to make it to the end zone. That's how. So it is intense, it is intentional, it is focused. And so I want us to kind of take this verse and put it in, in front of us, put it before us, so that as we make the decisions in life in this new year, that we put the right thing before us and we go after that right thing in the right way. That's with intensity and with... Uh, decisiveness and with rapidity. <laughs> and so this is what Paul is saying. And uh, if you go back with that in mind and you read these verses again, and you see that things that Paul says in this passage is pretty intense. It, it's pretty, uh, I count everything lost for Christ. So that's pretty all-inclusive. 
And so it's reflecting his pursuit. So that's, our, that's my encouragement to us as we begin a new year, that we will head towards Christ with vigor and intention and decisiveness and so on. Okay? Any comments or thoughts? That's, yeah, go ahead. Just to, just to throw it in there, but I just, I just see a lot of the local church in there. If I'm going to be intentional, it's going to take a lot more than me just soloing it. Yeah. About it. Anyway, I just encourage as I read that, like, man, that encourages me to keep meeting together. Yeah. It'll, it'll, uh, that's right, it'll cost us. Yeah. Cause us to make some changes. Definitely, I mean, I'm confronted myself with that. If I'm going to do this, there are changes that need to be mm -hmm. made. Some adjustments that need to be made in my life. If this is going to be true for me. But that's the encouragement. And by doing that, of course, we're not going to be let down. I mean, obtaining Christ in any way is more excellent than obtaining anything else. Mm -hmm.